Ready? Είμαι η Θεόνια από τη Ρόδο. Κοπιάστε στο πασχαλινό μας πρόγραμμα όπου θα παρουσιάσουμε χορούς, τραγούδια και φαγητά από την Ελλάδα. Spring is such a wonderful season in Greece. It is the time of the year when the young wheat comes up, when the soft greens and varied hues of budding flowers fill the landscape and the swallows return again from North Africa to build their nest. This is the Hilidonisma, the song of the swallows welcoming spring, which arrives much earlier in Greece than it does here in New England. It has been sung every year in my island of Rhodes since the 6th century BC. Today, is sung also by the children of St. Nicholas Church School of Lexington, Massachusetts, as part of our festivities celebrating the most deeply rooted holiday of the year in Greece, Easter. <laughs> Greek Easter is a movable feast calculated on the Julian calendar to always follow after the Hebrew Passover. Easter has customs and traditions interwoven with religion, ancient myths, and traditional observances. Ancient Greeks observed this time of the year with dances and rituals in um, association with the rebirth of nature with the blossoming of the flowers, the, the new crops, and young livestock. But Greeks now, all over the world, observe it with fasting, feasting, and worship in association with the resurrection of Christ. The Easter season begins with the pre-lental carnival week, followed by the 40 days of Lent, the Holy Week, Easter Day, and a whole week of post-Easter activities. I remember the Carnival Week with the fun, dancing, and masquerading, and good food. It really begins with a meat-eating Sunday and ends with a uh, dairy-eating Sunday. And the old men in the village, they say that this week is really connected with the old Cronian festivities, which dates back to their forefathers and that really gives an opportunity to the Greeks to express their love for dancing and food. Serianitsa, one of the dances which expresses the spirit of the festival week. It is performed by the Pondios of Massachusetts, descendants of the ancient Greeks of Pondos.
the Carnival Week, my family always enjoyed the traditional meat dishes. Some of them had to be done ahead of time so housewives can have fun too. The foods were like uh, bureka, which are small mouthfuls of ground spiced meat wrapped in pastry dough before they are baked. And kreatopita, which are a meat pie, is a meat pie stuffed with nice chunks of lamb and fresh vegetable spice, spices and herbs. And of course, ornitho, ornitho to furno, which is chicken of the oven wrapped with lemon, then stuffed with onions and set on a bed of carrots and celery surrounded with potatoes. But what children loved most are the lucumades, which are spices, pieces of spice dough, deep fry and they puffed. And while they're still hot, you drench them with honey. Hmm. Then for the dairy eating Sunday, the real goodbye to midday. All our relatives and friends will gather in our house to celebrate it. They will bring with them foods made with cheese and eggs, and my mother will make several more of her own for this occasion. Favorite dishes of my mother were the flaunes, which are open-faced cheese tarts made with melted feta cheese and herbs, and also tiropsomo, which is a cheese bread made with roll-out isto stuffed with four kinds of cheese and then shaped by gathering the edges and twisting them on the top. Another dish, always present at this day, is the sfongata, and they're inverted omelettes, and this one omelette, and this one is made with bits of fresh green zucchini squash, and it's one of my most favorite foods of this season. Then is misithropita. This one is a cheesecake made with sweet cheeses and honey and topped with whole apricots in syrup. <laughs> Games are also part of this week's festivities, and one of them is play with an egg. It swings by a string from a tree, and children try to catch it with their mouth. He or she who catches it is the luckiest person of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Clean Monday starts after dairy Sunday, and it is actually the beginning of fasting, but also the last day of dancing until the Easter celebration. It's a wonderful day for children and adults alike. We used to always pack our baskets with picnic foods early in the morning by the time our relatives and friends came by. And then we would walk up to the pines of hills of the pines, and there under the tree, we will spread our blankets and have a feast. Some of the fasting foods we'll take with us were media crassata, which are muscle steaming wine flavored with a touch of garlic and parsley, and revisto keftedes, which are cooked and mashed chickpeas flavored with onion and spices, shaped into patties and fried, and eaten either cold or hot. And gigantes are dry beans, giant ones, cooked and flavored with fresh onion and drenched with oil and lemon. And of course, taramas, which is preserved fish roll and is worked with oil and lemon to become a very zesty spread. And then are the Tursia, which are pickled vegetables cut out in different shapes, always present at this day with radishes, scallions, and lattices and olives. Also present at this day, Staphidopita, which is a cake made with raisins but without butter. And of course, it's halluvas, the children's favorite and very much present during the fasting season. Monday. 
and we would all dash through the flames twice shouting exorcism. So any evil spirit which hides in our body would drag into the fire, thus purifying ourselves. A Pondian dance called Pirigios expresses the spirit of this custom. days of Lent, people resume their normal life, going back to work, tending their fields and their animals. The shepherds up on their high camping grounds take advantage of this fasting season and they use the milk to make cheese and butter to be used for Easter. On the village, the storytellers talk about fasting and one of the stories is about uh, Goddess Dimitras long search for her lost daughter Persephone. And the legend is that Persephone was abducted by Pluto, the god of the underworld, and that Dimitra searched all over the earth to find her in vain, neglecting to eat and neglecting her duties as a mother earth. A fascinating story for me, and I always look forward to hear it every year at this time. But as Lent nearer its end, the shepherds will bring their flocks closer to our village, and you will see the hills covered with young lambs feeding on tender leaves of savory. The winds were so peaceful, and the days were peaceful, and the winds were so balmy. With the celebrations of St. Lazarus Day on Saturday, followed by Palm Sunday, land nears its end. Intricately woven palm crosses which are blessed in the church and then they are brought home and placed by the family icons are used during the year for incest and for special blessings. With the coming of Holy Week, music and entertainment of any kind is forbidden. 
and the fasting is more severe, even though the preparation of Easter begins with the baking and the spring cleaning. In my house, we always make the many kinds of circle cookies, and then we hang them on a tree branch from the ceiling to keep the, them out of the children's reach until Easter time. And on Holy Thursday, hundreds of cookies are, I mean, of eggs, are dyed bright red, a color that um, signifies the resurrection of Christ. Many of them are put aside for Easter Day, and others are made into avulas, which are sweet dough shaped in animals or in baskets, and then adorned with red eggs. My children's favor is the snakes holding an egg in their mouth. But really, the most beautiful one is the syndekniatiki avulla, and that's thin ropes, intricately uh, woven around dozens of eggs. And this is a present given from the godchildren to their godparents. And the godparents hang it on the wall, and then they eat it after Easter. And in turn, the godparents give the children a bright new outfit and most definitely a pair of shoes. It is really very easy to make <laughs> once you make your dough. And I would recommend the tsureki dough, which is, you have to cut the recipe in half. And the ingredients will be one yeast cake and a quarter of a cup warm water to dissolve the yeast cake, and a quarter of a pound butter, unsalted if you want, half a cup of sugar, three eggs, one cup of warm milk, uh, five cups of all-purpose unbleached flour, and a quarter of a teaspoon ground mastic that you can find in all the Greek stores. So you mix your dough and let it rise, and then you roll it into thick and thin ropes. Now, the thick ropes will be the base of your avgula, and you make them into an around shape can make it as large as you want, depending how many eggs you want to put in it. And you shape a cross right inside your circle. And that's the base of the augula. Now, you would put eggs in each corner or end. And in this little augula, you will put five eggs. Then you roll your thin ropes and with them, what you do is tie up the eggs. Because see, if you don't tie them up, they will break while they're cooking in the oven. You use eggs that are already hard boiled, and then you follow the directions of a dye to dye them. See? Then with still, again, small thin robes, you will make beautiful little braids to decorate your avgulla. And you can also make little twists like that and put them on each side. Now, the braids is very easy to make. Just take three pieces of dough, pinch together the ends, and then you braid it like you would braid your hair. That makes a cute little braid. Then you just use your imagination. You make little birds. Okay, and you just put them on the side. And what you do, you take a scissor and start pinching the dough. And when it's baked, that gives it a beautiful surface. You can do it below the braid, not right on it. And you can do the top. See, and you have an avgula that looks like this, and then you put put the very last touch on it. And that's again with thick, thin rope, which you scallop it at the very end with clover. No clover, clove. That gives it a nice touch and also keeps it secure so when it's baked, it's all uh, scalloped around it. Now, you brush it with egg just before you bake it. But you have to be very careful not to touch with the egg, the red eggs, because they will discolor. And you bake it at 350 
And then you get a beautiful, shiny avgula like this. Isn't it beautiful? On Good Friday, the day of mourning is full of lamentation and sadness. Preparations for Easter continues on Saturday. At night, we all gather outside the church, then just before midnight, the priest raises a candle proclaiming the resurrection with Christos Anesti, Christ has risen. One by one, lit our candles and exchange good wishes while the bells are ringing and the fireworks are set off. We took the light at home, guarding it from the wind, and before entering our house, my father would make the sign of cross on the top of the door to keep evil spirits out of the home. After the oil lamp was lit, the candles were set on the table where the traditional Easter soup, the lambrosupa, was served, accompanied with cheese triangles, but not before the red eggs were cracked by the family members. Each of us will choose an egg and hold it in our hand just with the tip exposed, and then very gently we tap the tips together until they cracked. And the ones whose egg has survived all the cracking, then he is the luckiest one in the family. Once more, Bertrand? <laughs> I'm the lucky one. <laughs> Easter day is so beautiful. After the short church service called the Mass of Love, where children kiss their parents' hands and ask forgiveness for misbehaving, everybody rushes home for the Paschal meal. Children are dressed in their bright new clothes and they're cracking eggs away with relatives and friends. And the table is beautifully decorated with the best tablecloth, and flowers of the spring, the many color anemones, and a bowl of bright, bright red eggs. Everything is set just so for the midday feast. The feast will start with tiropites, which are cheese triangles, followed by kapamas, which is the roast lamb stuffed with rice, pine nuts, and raisins. And then another dish of the feast is the pizella aspra, their new tender piece cooking a light buttered sauce flavored with lemon juice and dill. And then is the tender leaves of salad, lettuces, scallions, radishes, and olives. And the delicious Easter bread, the tsureki, sweet bread made with sugar, eggs, milk, and spiced with that delicate flavor of the ground mastic. And for dessert are the curambiedes, which are spice buttered cookies that melt in your mouth. And then the Easter cookies, the circle with the sesame on top, and galactamburico, the sweet made with custard, and a sandwich in between thin pastry dough filo. Very, very delicious. Then after everybody has savored their last bite, they have a rest, and in the afternoon, the exchange visits with relatives and friends. And then the circle dances begin with young girls clad in their colorful costumes and vivid scarves on their heads. The Sirtos is one of the most popular dances as performed by the Asterian Cretan Dance Group.
and dance continues throughout the week with lambs roasting on the speed outdoors and children, adults and old people socializing and dancing to the music. The spring festivities come to an end with the arrival of summer and harvest. But every year spring, the rebirth of nature and Easter, the most important part of this glorious season, will be celebrated again with feasting and dance. Kalo Pascha! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.